Hi everyone, welcome back to Online Darts. Here we are, we're still in Zoom, we're still in lockdown, but we've got the over genius himself, Dirk Van Dyven Boda, all the way from the Netherlands. Dirk, first of all, thanks for joining us. How's things? Yeah, busy. I need to catch up with for three weeks of work, so I'm getting there. I almost uh, got up, got, got up. What's life been like back in Holland since, obviously, the World Championships and everything like that? Boring. Must be some excitement, though. We see you doing news bits and people come into your work to speak to you and everything like that. Is that exciting or does it get in the way of work? Uh, it does get it in the way a bit, but um, yeah, it's nice to do. But at some point you think, you think well, uh, I've had enough of it. Like, yeah, you're just telling the same story a lot of times and at some point you think, well, I think you all know it now. Have you had time to look back at your year 2020? Because it was a brilliant breakthrough year for yourself. Yeah, yeah. I'm well, it's kind of getting to my head now. Like, well, you did very well. And um, I set a goal. Like, I want to be top 32 in three years when I won my tour card back. And now I did it in one year. So, very well. It's a, I think it's a very good performance. Of very good. When, when you look back... What's the one highlight if you can only pick one from 2020? Uh, hard. Um, I think it's either the win of Gary Anderson or the win against Durant in the world. Can't make a very good decision of it. But five, one of those two. Five great performances. Yeah, true. Obviously, now there's different expectations from fans, critics, and probably yourself because of the, the year you've had. How do you try and top that in 2021? Um, well, you have to be realistic. That's where you start. And uh, of course, I'm trying to top the performances in 2020, but um, it's, it's not for granted that you make um, four quarterfinals every year. I think um, I think that's only given to a few players who always do that. Like, and you're speaking of top four players now, and I'm not a top four player. Um, so yeah, I just hope that. Um, well, I made four quarterfinals, and I set myself a goal to make two quarterfinals. But it all starts to qualify for the tournament. So hey, you have to look at that as it comes, because I can now say I want to make four quarterfinals again, and I can like. Just play UK Open and the Worlds. That, that's a possibility. So, um, yeah, just stay realistic and try to get as much as you can. And, well, first goal is to qualify for the match play, but, yeah, it, it's not easy. Just touching on what you said there about you're not a top four player. However, do you think you have the game to become a top four player in time? Well, I think I have the game, but I'm not sure... Um, I'm not showing that game at the moment on stage. I do it very uh, rarely. I think you play the game against Adam Hunt. That's starting to get like how I feel in practice. And it wasn't even the best I could. And then you play 104 average. So, well, if I look at it like that, I think I got the game. But I'm not showing that game very often yet. Um, not that I'm playing bad. But if you want to be top four, I think you need to consistently play close to 100 or over 100 and I'm not doing that yet because of the year you've had this year, or last year I'm just looking at the rankings potentially playing for Holland in the World Cup isn't a million miles away is it if you have another good year is that something that you thought of um yeah you think about it but I don't want it to be a big goal because I think it distracts players what I've seen they get extra pressure for playing in the World Cup. So why would I be busy with that? I think that's a bonus thing. Huh? And um, I'm just playing to be the best I can do. And if that's being number two in Holland, that's good. But if not, well, what can you do? But um, I think it's a realistic goal to play in 2023. Um, but for this year, it will be very hard. I know at the World, you spoke about having the team around you and everything being right at the moment. We've just seen you've signed a new management deal with Modus. 
Was that something important? And is that a big part of your team and cog of Dirk Van Dijk and Boda as well? Um, yeah, to be fair, I wasn't sure if I was uh, resigning with him because I I can do a lot myself. I do I do a lot myself. And sometimes you think, yeah, why do I need a manager? But now when you start playing well, you see what a manager does, like in the world, so busy. And that's when I realized I need one. I need, and I need the best one. And I think Jason is the best one, in my opinion. So, yeah, that was um, from doubting if I would do it myself. It went to like, I want to stay with him. And then obviously we have to figure out the deal. But um, what didn't took us that long to figure out the deal. And we're good now. Just on what, what you said there, that the pressures now you're in the top 32 of everything that a manager does. Is that something that players don't really look at and is massively needed? Because you see certain players think, oh, like you said, I can do it all on my own. But just the pressure a manager relieves must be huge. Well, I can do it on my own. Uh, but there is a relief indeed. But uh, the world champion is without a manager. His wife does it. So, I don't know. I think you can do it without. But... It helps a very lot, um, and if it's only the reason that people don't come to you or your wife with things, yeah. Um, but with Jason, and he obviously works with Michael, and oh, he gets the interview requests, and he doesn't even tell Michael sometimes because he he thinks, well, he's not doing interviews anyway. And if you're doing it yourself, you have to tell no to every reporter then, and I don't think that's it, well. It gives you some. Uh, or some busy in your head. Yeah. Looking ahead to the rest of the year, obviously last year we played 90% of the year behind closed doors. Now we know that you're someone that loves the crowd, loves your walk on, you feed off that energy. I'm guessing you're hoping they come back as soon as they can. Yeah, of course. Um, but I'm not focused on the crowd. Um, of course you want to have them there, but I think my um, strength this year was I, wouldn't, I want to win either way. Like, you know, uh, I uh, prepared myself for crowd. I prepared myself for without crowd. And I was there. I just want to perform. And you got people, yeah, I need to adrenaline of the crowd. I need it as well. But if that's not there, don't moan about it. And focus on your game you're playing. And um, stakes are still the same. Um, it, it's, the tournaments are even more important, maybe, because you have less Eurotor events. So... Yeah, of course you want to have them there, but also for the PDC, because um, our prize money needs to be paid as well. And I think they got a good buffer, but that stops at some point as well. Yeah. And yeah, of course you like with crowd, but I'm prepared for known crowd as well. Just on like the crowds and venues, we spent a lot of time at Milton Keynes and Coventry, places like that. But I'm guessing that you'd love to go to the Winter Gardens, the, these holy grail of darts venues that we see all those special nights in. Are you looking forward to being able to play in those again as well? In what? Are you looking forward to being able to play in venues like the Winter Gardens and things like that? Yeah, well, I've never been in the Winter Gardens, so for me, there's nothing special about it. I know I only know from TV and it looks very nice. Yeah. Um, but I wasn't Ali Pelli and I would have I would have been very disappointed if I re-entered my world championship again after five years and then wouldn't have played in Ali Pelli. So I was glad I played in Ali Pelli because that one is special for me because I've been there. But Winter Gardens have never been there and I hope to finally be there one time. Of course. Yeah, no, yeah. Uh, like, I think the way you're playing, you've got a great chance as well. And the, the walk-on at the Winter Gardens would be something special, fingers crossed. Yeah. Well, let's hope. Um, to be fair, I don't think we'll have any crowd before June, but it's in July, and well, hopefully they can do some manage something. Yeah, I know that a lot's been made about the, the fact that you still work on the aubergine farm and you and you love what you do. The better you become at the sport, obviously you're going to be away more and more because you're going to be in all these tournaments. Have you got a great relationship with obviously your boss that he understands and doesn't mind you going off and playing darts, or will it ever become a problem? No, because uh, when I started this job, it was always set to um, to play darts as well. Um, that's what we always had in mind. I always worked on a part-time contract where I worked full-time, but I, had a, I have a part-time contract, so I always make my hours. Yeah. Um, obviously, if you play in the Premier League, it will be tough to make your hours. Um, 
but I would if you go Premier League, you're away Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. But you, well, I work in the office, so I can bring my laptop and I can still work. And I, I did that as well in the in a few events this year as well, TV events, because you have days off. I brought my laptop to the world, so I brought my laptop to the Grand Grand Slam, Grand Prix, Winter Series. Of course, you make a little bit less hours, and I need my office with the stuff I got here, but I still can do things. And um, I think it's only busy from October till December if you do very well, because if you play Pro Tours, it's it's not a big deal uh, being away for a few days. Looking ahead as well to the, the rest of the year, what mini goals have you set yourself? Are you breaking the year up into little chunks to manage it, like after October or after March? I want to do this after July. I want to do this, or is it a year as a whole? Um, well, I, I always need a goal to practice for, and that now my goal was to do well in the UK Open, so I'm focusing on the UK Open and um, I want to do well in the Pro Tours if we have them before the UK Open. We probably have Pro Tours before the UK Open, but um, it's hard if there's no no tournament announced because you don't know when you have to be ready, but um, that was a mistake I made last year. I wasn't ready for a few events. And so I told myself um, to just keep on practicing every day. And so I didn't change my practicing routine after the Worlds. I'm still doing the same, maybe an hour less than before the Worlds. But um, yeah, the goals are the, the, world, uh, the TV events, but um, their first goal is to qualify. Well, after the UK Open, I want to qualify for the match play. So we look at that TV event to, to be TV event. I'm not sure if you've seen today, but the UK Open dates have been announced. No, I haven't seen them. Yeah, they had two, two seconds and I'll tell you when they are. Um, yeah, it was only about an hour ago they that they came out. I was practicing an hour ago. <laughs> so, yeah, the UK Open dates are the 5th to the 7th of March at Milton Keynes. Okay, well, that's a goal to um, practice for. And I, I always thought it would be in the, in the March as well. So that's what, what I was aiming for. And I'll be ready, hopefully. Look, absolute pleasure talking to you, mate. I know you're at work. And thanks for taking time out to speak to me, as always, mate. Much appreciated. No problem. No problem. See you later.